good Sunday morning. I'm meteorologist Michelle Morgan with your September 25th tropical update. Uh, right now we're continuing to uh, monitor tropical storm Ian looking uh, more impressive on satellite imagery. It is becoming organized, uh, especially since the last update. The convection band's pretty broken, but it is holding its own. And you can see the convection uh, trying to wrap around the center of this system here. So right now it is moving to the west northwest at 14 miles per hour and it's about 300 miles south southeast of Grand Cayman. Now right now it is packing winds of 50 miles per hour with stronger wind gusts of 65 miles per hour. So it is expected to continue to swirl through the central Caribbean Sea through the rest of today into late tonight and then approaching the western Caribbean Sea as a category one hurricane with winds of 80 miles per hour. As it continues this track to the northwest, it's going to continue to intensify because it'll be running into a favorable atmospheric environment. The wind shear is rather low and also the water. It is above average, very hot water. The heat potential is there for it to continue to intensify. So as it approaches western Cuba, it may clip that country or the center will get very close to it, bringing hurricane conditions as early as Tuesday morning and we're talking about winds perhaps around 120 miles per hour and then as it heads into the eastern Gulf of Mexico further intensification is expected uh, we're thinking it could be a cat 4 storm with winds of 130 miles per hour again we're looking at Tuesday and then it's going to continue this trend into uh, looks like somewhere along Florida now notice the cone of uncertainty it is rather large we're talking about from Panama City and then along the panhandle as far as Fort Myers. So again, we're going to have to continue to watch it, watch this uh, system. The forecast track, we're uncertain as to where it's going to make landfall along Florida because we're still a couple days out. So I do want to show you the tropical models here, as you can see. I'm going to stop it right there in western Cuba. Pretty good consensus. We're looking at a general agreement taking this system through the western Caribbean, making landfall again, as I mentioned either the western tip of Cuba or somewhat staying in the Caribbean Sea heading into the Gulf of Mexico. But then after that, notice the spread. Again, we're looking at different scenarios as to where the center will make landfall. As the system continues to get better organized, we'll have a better handle on a locked forecast as early as Tuesday into our Wednesday. Now, as we look at the rainfall potential, again, we're looking at a lot of rain associated with this system, especially as we get closer to Thursday and Friday. Some areas in Florida could easily pick up between three to four, even five, six inches of rainfall with locally higher amounts. And this forecast is subject to change as we get a better understanding of this system. We already have a hurricane warnings in effect for the Cayman Islands and Western Cuba. Again, hurricane conditions are expected. Now, as we talk about about Ian impacts for today. Tropical storm conditions are expected again along Jamaica or over Jamaica. And then we're looking at heavy rainfall, strong gusty winds, and certainly flash flooding is um, definitely something to keep in mind, especially if you live in that country. That's definitely um, a potential there. And then looking at the hurricane conditions to begin uh, in the Cayman Islands as early as Monday as this system continues to intensify. Now, hurricane conditions will continue uh, to spread along Cuba Monday night into Tuesday, and then heavy rainfall, hurricane force winds uh, perhaps along the west coast of Florida panhandle as early, early as Wednesday. So again, we're looking at this time frame between Wednesday and Friday. Still a lot of uncertainty with this forecast, but for us here at home, our local forecast in southeast Louisiana, as of right now, it doesn't look like it will be an immediate threat to our area. Perhaps we'll see uh, strong uh, gusty winds in our area or, or, or we're looking at rip currents, life threatened rip currents. So boating conditions could certainly be hazardous as we wrap up the work week. So just keep that in mind as we head into next week. So here's what's going on as we take a look at the water vapor imagery. So you could clearly see all that moisture, that moist air mass, the tropical storm Ian right there. And it's displaced just a little bit because it is running into a little bit of dry air. Again, that dry air is not really affecting it because it's sustaining itself very well because it is moving into a favorable environment.
warm and not a whole lot of wind shear and the water as we take a look at the sea surface temperatures here it is well above 80 degrees so again with these tropical systems you need at least 80 degrees for it to sustain itself and keep in mind we haven't had any tropical systems any hurricanes go through the Caribbean or even the Gulf of Mexico so the ocean heat content this is below the sea surface it is warm it's above average a lot of heat potential for the system to continue to intensify so the intensity forecast uh, we're a little bit more confident that this system will continue to intensify as it goes through the Caribbean Sea today into tomorrow so as we take a look at the upper level pattern again what's staring this thing uh, as I mentioned before there's still a lot of questions to this forecast but there is an upper level trough that is going to develop today that's actually going to pull a cool front into our area as we head into tomorrow. That's gonna bring fall like weather to Southeast Louisiana as we go through the rest of the week. But also that upper level trough, it's going to be a magnet and it's going to pull E into the north and the northwest. Now the question is when? We're still uncertain with the timing and how strong this trough will be to pull E into the north and northwest. So that's why the tropical models are really not in agreement or they're disagreeing as to where this system will make landfall along Florida. But the GFS and the Euro, pretty good agreement, taking it through the Western Caribbean into uh, Western Cuba. Uh, the GFS is in red and the Euro is in green. Now look what happens after that as it heads into the Gulf. So the Euro is showing the center of Ian a little bit closer to the Western portions of Florida, but then the GFS keeps Ian over the eastern Gulf of Mexico and as you can see as we get closer to Friday by this time we're looking at the GFS making landfall somewhere along the Florida Panhandle but then the Euro already making landfall around Thursday along the west coast of Florida so timing is uncertain and, and of course location as to where uh, the system will make landfall still a lot of questions up in the air so the wind shear forecast again uh, pretty pretty good handling showing that atmosphere uh, conditions will be fair favorable for the system to continue to intensify at least for the next uh, first or the next couple of days or so but then look what happens as we get into our Thursday and also Friday it looks like the wind shear is going to pick up because not only will we have that upper level trough that's going to pull E into the north and northwest again timing we're still uncertain so that's going to create a bit of an unfavorable environment and this system could potentially weaken into a category two hurricane before making landfall nonetheless this will still be a strong hurricane as it makes landfall so somewhere along the western portions of uh, Florida bringing hurricane conditions and heavy rainfall and uh, life-threatening swells to the west west coast of Florida. Now, that's not the only system we're watching. Again, Ian is a little bit closer to our neck of the woods, so we'll monitor this system very closely. But as of right now, it doesn't look like it's going to be an immediate threat to southeast Louisiana. Now, Gaston is, is found in the northern portions of the Atlantic Basin. Not a threat to the mainland, but it is bringing tropical storm conditions to the Azores uh, this morning, but it is running into some wind shear and then Hermine is now a, po a post-tropical system uh, as it continues to hug the coast of uh, Africa and then there's another area that we're watching has a low chance of development here as a 20 to 30 percent or 10 excuse me 10 to 20 percent uh, chance of development as we go through the next several days or so so we'll continue to watch that there again not a threat to our area and uh, that's it. We just have three active named systems in the Atlantic Basin or in the tropics. So uh, Tropical Storm Gaston, it is being shared by strong upper level winds, as you can see for yourself. And we do expect it to become a tropical depression later on today, but it is moving to the west at 12 miles per hour with winds of 50 miles per hour and wind gusts of 65 miles per hour as of the latest update. And there's the latest track of that system. So, so far we've had several named storms right now. We're at Ian. So if we have a named storm in the tropics, Julia is next on the list. So uh, that does it for me here uh, for your 10 a.m. tropical update. Of course, we'll continue to update as the information becomes available. So make sure you are checking back, uh, checking back with us uh, for the latest updates. So I'm meteorologist Michelle Morgan, and thank you so much for watching.